I know my sisters love me a lot. I can never hide when I'm sad because they'll just see the red blood on my amazing dark face, you know, and they'll want to help us. So if we really love ourselves and we love our neighbors, then we must always accept the help from our neighbors. We can only do this if we continuously seek authenticity and integrity in our lives. And let's put a pause on that and see how we can love God and neighbor in the context of the Eucharist. So today, we are on part five of six of our Teaching Mass series. I cannot believe we have one more part remaining. So let's go to slide two. Today, we focus on communion rite. I know we are on the second part of the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And we said the Liturgy of the Eucharist has three parts. The first part was preparation of the gifts. The second part was the Eucharistic prayer, which ends with the big amen. And today, we are on part three, which is the communion rite. The communion rite follows the Eucharistic prayer, leading the faithful to the Eucharistic table. The rite begins with the Lord's Prayer, and when we say the Lord's Prayer, we are reminded that Jesus taught us this prayer and the way he taught his disciples to pray. And in this prayer, we join our voices to pray for the coming of God's kingdom and to ask God to provide for our needs, forgive our sins, and bring us to the joy of heaven. So the question that comes is, why do some people hold hands during the Lord's Prayer? Hello? At least I know I don't hold anybody's hands. So some people hold hands during the Lord's Prayer, while others hold their hands out like the priest. There's holding hands, and actually it should be stretching hands. Is there a prescribed posture for our Father? To be honest, you can't really find any prescription of that. But remember what we always talk about, imitate the hands of the deacon. So the priest will always stretch his hands out in prayer during our father. And we, the laity, are strongly, it's not a must, it's strongly recommended. So we strongly recommend that you hold your hands together in a prayer position, just like the deacons do. Now, if Deacon Chito scratches his hair, don't do that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not part of the hair. <laughs> if it's like caressing his beards, you're not supposed to do that. But when he's putting his hands in a prayer position, that's what you're called upon to imitate during the Lord's Prayer. After the Lord's Prayer, what follows next is the sign of peace. The rite of peace follows. The celebrant prays that the priest of Christ will fill our hearts our families, our church, our communities, and our world. As a sign of hope, the people extend to those around them a sign of peace. And this is the best time if your spouse annoyed you. You just look at them and give them the sign of peace. Remember, if we claim to love God, we must also love our neighbor. Parents, if your siblings had a fight, you must make them give each other big hugs because we are extending the love of God. If we don't, then it's very difficult if you come and receive Holy Communion, if you have not settled your issues with those whom you love. Now, if you have an annoying neighbor standing next to you, time for mass, this is not the time to show them a grumpy face. Turn to them, give them that Father Taylor smile, and tell them the peace of the Lord be with you, you know? Because we are called to always be at peace in preparation to receive Holy Communion. After the sign of peace, we normally have the Lamb of God. I love when it's sung in Greek or Latin. And the choir loves it because they have to do it anyway, you know? And sometimes we do it in English. But in either way, when we do the Lamb of God, we are proclaiming what John the Baptist did. In the Lamb of God, when we sing Agnus Day, we proclaim what John the Baptist proclaimed back in the days, that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God 
who takes away the sins of the world, and this can be found in the Bible. And when we do this, we are called to actually believe what we are proclaiming. If you say, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, but you didn't greet your spouse or your sibling or your child, you are just condemning yourself with that very act. After the Lamb of God, the next part is the Holy Communion. Before receiving Holy Communion, the celebrant, that is the priest, and the assembly, that is all of you here present, acknowledge their unworthiness to receive a great, to receive so great a gift. The celebrant receives Holy Communion first, and as soon as we receive Holy Communion, the choir starts singing. Then you come forward. Those who receive Holy Communion should be prepared to receive so great a gift. They should fast, yes, my fellow Starbucks lovers, because I love Starbucks, to heaven and back. No, we should fast, you know, except for medicines. If you are sick, that's a different story. If you are not sick, don't imitate being sick. We should fast for at least an hour before receiving Holy Communion and should not be conscious of having committed serious sins. So this helps us to always be aware of our conscience. My dear brothers and sisters, when we share at the Eucharistic table, we share a sign of unity in the body of Christ. And only those in communion with the Catholic Church may receive Holy Communion. To invite others to receive Holy Communion implies a unity which does not exist. And this is the only time the church segregates Catholics from non-Catholics. Not because you don't like them, but why should you receive Holy Communion in the faith you don't subscribe in? It doesn't work out. Like I'm Kenyan, when I go to the airport and there's the line for American citizens, I cannot claim to be an American because I'm not. I'll just go to the other line which says others than American citizens. Now, when you come to Kenya, I'll pay back. I'll go to the Kenyan line. Then you'll go to the others. Because you can't claim to be Kenyan just as I cannot claim to be American. In the same way, if no people don't believe in the Eucharist, they cannot claim to receive Holy Communion in the faith they don't believe in. It's just that simple. And it's not, it's not a matter of having pains. It's because... It is what it is. Now, for those not receiving Holy Communion, you are encouraged to express in your hearts a prayerful desire for unity with the Lord and with one another, especially when you make the spiritual act of Holy Communion. And now we have a lot of questions. Should we receive the communion standing or kneeling on the communion rails that I love so much? If I had like $10 million, I'll put communion rails all over the place. So, so which is the right place? So we are going to discuss about that next weekend. But if you go to the bulletin, you have information. So if you have $10 million, please send it my way. Then we'll put communion rails, and I'll be more than happy, and we'll take selfies and continue receiving communion on the communion rails. Ta-da! <laughs> so... So this is where sometimes Catholics get confused. Which is the right way of receiving Holy Communion? Standing or kneeling? On the tongue or by, on the hand? On the communion rails? Or however, do you do curtsies if you're a lady? Or if, you, if you're a man, do you bow or say cool and all that kind of stuff? We're going to focus on that next weekend. So that's my homework. You better remind me. For non-Christians, if you're not a Christian, we also welcome you to this celebration, but let's be honest, we cannot admit you to Holy Communion. But we ask you to pray for us and pray for peace and the unity of the human community. In the distribution of the Holy Communion, priests and deacons are ordinary ministers of the Holy Communion. But sometimes, if there's a thousand people, we, when need arises, we invite Lady to help us in distribution of the Holy Communion, and we call them extraordinary ministers of the Holy Communion. It is not their right, because it's extraordinary. 
but it's an invitation. And sometimes when you come from us, just be sure you're well dressed because if there's no extraordinary communion and I know you receive Holy Communion, guess what? I'll come to you. Now, if you don't like, just take the neighbor's baby and hold it. Then I won't call you to distribute Holy Communion. That is why also why we should always be well dressed when you come from us. Some people get upset when we talk about the Sunday best, but to be honest, I care less about that because we must always dress well when we come from us. Because if we go for, if you go to the disco, it will be weird if you go in a suit, as in how are you going to dance, you know, to those songs from Rihanna and uh, Beyonce. You can't dance in a suit. So the same way, when you come to church, you must dress appropriately. Now, I'm not condemning anyone. I'm forced to wear this thing, so you don't know the jeans I'm wearing. But at the end of the day, we are called to be well-dressed because we are coming to so great a feast. And that's why, if there's no extraordinary minister of the Holy Communion, any priest can deputize any Catholic worthy of receiving Holy Communion that responsibility. So even if you sit at the back, I'll come for you. So be ready to always be invited to do that. After communion is done, we have members of our community who take Holy Communion to our members of our community who are sick and are not able to be here. And those are the people you see coming forward and they are given their final blessing to go and take communion to those who are not able to be here. Those of you who sneak out before mass or you do what you call the Judas Shuffle, you've been served. <laughs> so it's not fair to attend mass and not receive the final blessing. It's important for us to be here from the beginning to the end. As in, I've never seen anyone jumping out of the plane before it taxis and it reaches to the gate. It can't work. So also in mass, let's also learn to, to be together from the beginning uh, to the end. So if you go to slide 10, which is the concluding rite, after prayer after Holy Communion, the priest will invite us to be seated if there are any announcements. And these announcements are the necessary announcements that we need to be aware of. Then after that, the priest will invite us to stand for a final blessing, then he'll give us a dismissal. And the deacon will normally say, go in peace, the mass is ended, or go forth to proclaim the kingdom of the Lord. In fact, the dismissal gives the liturgy its name. The word mass comes from the Latin word misa, and in Swahili, misa, with one S. At one time, the people were dismissed with the words, and I quote, ite misa est, which literally means go, the mass is ended. This word misa is related to the word missio. You see, misa, missio, and the root word which is mission. So when we dismiss you and ourselves when the mass is ended, we've been sent to a mission. The liturgy does not simply come to an end. You go forth until the next time we gather. And those assembled, which means all of us here, are sent forth to bring the fruits of the Eucharist to the world. Like today, we have to take the good news that God loves us so much and we to love him with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, and we must love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Amen?